Alrighty, hey guys, this is Think Outside the Cube, and I'm finally providing you guys with a one-year review of my father's car. This is our 2014 Nissan Altima 2.5 SV. Whew, that's a mouthful. Um, it's in the gun metallic exterior with the charcoal black cloth interior, and um, I want to go ahead and apologize up front if this is a pretty lengthy video, because it probably will be, but... Um, this is just a base SV. All we, the only options that we do have are the mud guards and the body side moldings. So, um, Dad looked into getting a 2.5S with the sport package. And the sport package just basically gave you 16 inch alloys and a rear spoiler. But I was like, Dad, come on now. <laughs> you are not buying a 2.5S. Nothing wrong with those, but I mean, um, he definitely is glad that he bought the 2.5 SV just for the upgraded radio, yada, yada, yada. All right. So let's go ahead and get to the nitty gritty, which I think I've already said. <laughs> but um, I have my little list of pros and cons that Dad said that he had. And so we'll go ahead and go over the exterior ones. Um, the cons that he so far has had with the car is the right rear shock bearing had to be replaced because it would like bottom out when we went over speed bumps and such. That wasn't a big deal, covered under warranty. Um, we got a rental car, that's what the, um, that 2013 Rogue S was for. Um, and then one other thing that would deal with the exterior, there's one thing interior also, is when he is stopped at a stoplight, his idle will fall to like 500 RPMs. And then that will cause the um, some of the interior parts to like shake. And so he's just going to go when he gets his oil changed. And they're going to update it again. And hopefully that will fix the problem of the idle dropping. Because my car has the same issue where sometimes the idle will drop at a stoplight or something like that. And um, it'll cause things to like start to shake like change or something like that. But um, that's an easy fix. That's just system computer stuff. So we'll just go over some pro pros that he has. Now he loves the smooth and quiet ride that it provides. He really does like the CVT. Um, despite all the automotive journalists hating it, Dad really just, he enjoys it. Or I wouldn't say he enjoys it, but he appreciates what it does for the car because coming from his 2013 Ford Fusion with the jerky six speed he really just likes how it's really linear saves miles per gallon saves gas saves him money in the long run at the at the pump so um he really just appreciates the CVT and I really see what that's what um four cylinder cars are starting to go to 2014 Civic added CVT Accords now has CVTs so everyone is really following in Nissan's footsteps because they're really the ones that pioneered the CVT but um coming on farther down and um he wanted me to mention that this is a great car for the money um, sticker for the car was 24, five, 24 we're rounding it up to 25000 We bought it out the door for 22000 And so that's a significant discount. You basically, I don't think you can even get in an Accord LX for that, um, let alone a Civic EXL. And so I really do think that the value aspect of this car is really just... Um, why they sell so much but it's a really quality car also one of dad's friends who had like an o2 solora um he just went and traded it in on a 2.5 s and i think he paid 17.5 for the 2.5 s so they are going for a bargain dad um the reason dad went in and bought it was because it was a five thousand dollars off now they're doing six thousand dollars off on the 2015 Altimas. so i mean it's really just it's really just hunky dory um nissan is can't keep them on the lots but coming up front we have no rock shift or anything like this this is daily driver format but it is pretty clean surprisingly um no rock chips or anything like that headlights of course are fine after a year no oxidization um, I can't find any curb rash either. 
um, on the wheels. Dad really does like the alloy wheels. I'm so glad he didn't get the, the freaking steel wheels. Um, now, these are the original Michelin Primacy um, MX V4 tires that are on the car. I think they are P21555R17s, and they've got about half tread left. The car has about 20, 24,000 miles on it in one year. And so um, I could see around 35,000, he's going to need some new tires. Um, one thing I did notice right here that I didn't really like was um if you follow the gap all the way down down here it expands and I, I know you can see that on camera it like tightens up and then it expands down here where this rocker panel is i really don't like that it's a small thing but it's something that i noticed um chrome strip running around the windows i really like that some cars nowadays family sedans really don't have that anymore um of course the body side moldings which I could seriously do without but since dad is in and out at hospitals and all that kind of stuff constantly he really wanted that to kind of prevent door dings um chrome door handles stuff like that clear lens tail lights it's a love it or hate it thing I think they look good the Altima has had them since it was redesigned um chrome strip running across of course it hasn't been in any accidents or anything like that but yeah, seven minutes into the video, let's go ahead and hop inside. And so I want I brought Dad's original key. I'll just lay this paper right here. Oh wait, no, I need it. Um, this is the key that Dad uses on a daily basis. And of course, as you can see, it has a remote start if the camera would focus. Hold on, let's see if we can get it on a focus point. There we go. Um, it does have remote start, keyless entry, all that kind of stuff, smart key. But this is how well the key has held up in a year. And Dad really isn't delicate with his keys. He just kind of throws them all over the place. And so I'm sure this has hit the ground plenty of times. And it really has held up well. Um, there's a reason Nissan has hold, held on to this, um, this egg key system. Because it really is, um, for longevity reasons, it's a good key. Now looking at your door handle, you do have smart key access on the driver, passenger, and the trunk lid. So just press the button. That locked it. Press the button twice to unlock all the doors. Now coming inside, um, we do have the charcoal cloth black interior. I'll just go ahead and lay this stuff down. But um, I just want to show you where on the seat. Dad is by no means um, a skinny mini or as you, I don't know how you could describe it. But he's a solid, I, I don't know, 200 pounds, I don't know. But um, so looking at your seat, I mean, of course, there's reasonable creasing and stuff like that. And it's this suede material, so it catches on to everything. But um, it is kind of... Um, the stitching is starting to like start to be pressed down some I guess but it's really there's no rips tears anything like that I think it's holding up better than leather would another thing is the floor mat the Ultima logo the stitching is kind of rubbing off I don't know if you can really see that but I'm sure if he took it to the dealer it's under the 36,000 miles if dad really cared um hmm anything else wear wise um the armrest is perfectly fine no problems with that um he's really glad he got the charcoal instead of the really light colored interior like we had on the fusion um the charcoal shows absolutely nothing except um stain wise absolutely nothing except um like hair and stuff like that so we'll go ahead and close the door all right, and so we'll press our foot on the brake and press the button to start. Okay. All right, so coming up here to your gauges, um, as you can see, our lifetime average for fuel economy is 31.2, and I think that's really reasonable for a family sedan with a 2.5 liter um, inline four-cylinder, 180 horsepower-ish, um, for this much room that is really good that's a better average than my car gets so we'll go ahead and look at mileage 24,477 miles of course this isn't exact he had about 23.8 when the um 
when the one year period came up on this car we purchased the car on February 14th um, of 2014 so it has been just over a year now looking at materials of course all of your door panel and all that is still holding up well um, if you've been a long time subscriber you remember on that Ford Fusion one year review there was that little dimple where dad rested his elbow on the soft touch materials and of course that is not here in this case um, it's all like a really high quality soft touch and it does carry over onto the dash right here above the instrument cluster and right on this side um up here it is a hard plastic material but of course they've got to reserve some stuff for infinity because they're not doing too well but looking at your door panel all your armrest and stuff is holding up well it's still nice and padded automatic windows still works dad didn't even know he had an automatic up window he just thought it was an automatic down up until like a week ago um power locks of course power mirrors um, trunk release all that kind of stuff dad has mentioned that he absolutely hates the fuel cap release placement he's constantly popped the hood sometimes when he goes to reach for his fuel cap but um it's just something he'll have to get used to now looking at your steering wheel as you can see the leather that they used was a little bit of a rougher material um, and I think that really is because it will wear better over time. It won't be shiny in two years. So once like um, once this rougher material wears down, it will just be like starting with a soft leather. And so it'll have that um, that newer like chalky soft look than um, than something like the Commander would because that wheel is absolutely gross looking because of the leather that Chrysler used. But this is a really thick, high quality leather. Um, as you can see, all your steering wheel, audio controls, all that kind of stuff. Wipe or um, headlights, automatic lights, of course. Over here, intermittent speed wipers, no problems there. Now, as you can see right here, this is the, the upgraded head unit you get on the SV. Um, XM satellite radio dad has subscribed to it and stuff like that um, he absolutely loves the sound system in the car looking up here you can see that this speaker doesn't really fit all that well there's this little gap right here and that's something dad really wanted me to mention um, as a con because they can't really fix it because they would have to take this whole piece of plastic out this upper dashboard and we'll put another piece in because it's not the speaker cover missing the the clip it's the it's like the female end on the um the plastic dashboard kind of like snapped out of place and so they would have to replace this part um hmm what else what else what else what else smooth ride good seats um simple to use electronics he likes how simple it is of course we do have a rear view camera in the sv with um distance lines no trajectory though i'm pretty sure you get that on navigation models but um the nasa inspired seats he really has grown to appreciate over long road trips and such good car for the money yada 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 all that kind of stuff so coming down here in 2015 models they did eliminate this little um covered storage area where you can close the cap i don't really know why they would i think it's a really premium um, touch to the car there's this little light that shines down below it kind of illuminating what's in here but I guess with eliminating this this cap it gives you more space I don't know um, so I'm definitely glad that we have that cup holders I think they separated them I'm not too sure that it was either the Ford Fusion oh well it was either the Ford Fusion or the um, the Altima where they did that. I think it was the Fusion though. As you can see, my phone, just typical iPhone 6 stuff. Um, co coins, this is where Dad keeps his coins. Um, if we had a SL model, heated seats would be here. As you can see, all old people's stuff in here. Ibuprofen and um, crackers. But yeah, that's basically it for the front. We'll go ahead and turn the car off and I'll give you a quick view of the rear seat and the trunk. So coming back here, me and my brother have rode back here plenty of times for just quick trips to going out to eat and stuff like that. But um, as you can see, there is plenty of room. My dad is around six feet tall. And of course, I'm um, 
like five eight five nine ish on a good day and i have plenty of room there's plenty of room for my feet to go up under the seat um really solid doors nothing rattles jiggles around still soft touch materials no problems here padded armrest all that kind of stuff power window chrome door handles all that stuff um looking over here armrest of course no no padding has receded i've seen some of these where um the padding hasn't like risen back up some but i guess that's just from like constant use um, putting that back as you can see the absolutely hideous headrest that every automotive reviewer hates on um, It is an extremely cheap looking touch, but I mean are you I I don't care um, I mean it doesn't look good, but I mean it form over function I guess or function over form I don't know um, as you can see this is where dad was hauling probably like PVC pipes or something like I have no idea but I mean all the materials back here have held up really well this plastic on the back of the seat has um kind of scratched up a little bit but I'm sure if we got some like armor all or something like that that would kind of like moisturize the plastic you'd be all good um, on SV models or um, SL models pardon me you do get rear vents that would be something that would be nice to have but you know um, you do compromise some things when you're only spending twenty two thousand dollars coming back to the um, rear you can see your little backup camera right here all that kind of stuff dad took the little dealer sticker off I'm um, coming back here you can see gooseneck hinges that crush your cargo um, your release for when you kidnap little kids stuff like that um as you can see dad uses the trunk full time 200 percent all the time um so i mean it's constantly filled up with stuff the gooseneck hinges don't interfere whatsoever and he really likes this how it's cut out more than the fusion the trunk lid if you've ever opened the trunk on a fusion it opens up like right here and you always constantly bang your head on it trust me and then the opening is a little bit better fitment issues along here have held up better than the fusion we had um fusion it was like splitting right here all the way down um right now it's not doing that we've got a little like crease right gap right there but, i mean it's the trunk um and another thing i forgot to mention we do have the trunk organizer and first aid kit underneath the floor i mean that was that was nothing but, um, oh, what is this? 18 minutes later, we are finally finished with this review. Um, it's been an exceptional car for us. We've had zero issues with it whatsoever. Of course, I didn't open the hood or anything like that because we've had no mechanical issues. But after the 20, nearly 25,000 miles that we've driven this car in the one year, it has been nothing but basic, um, transportation i mean this just drives dad to and from work to the grocery store all that kind of stuff and he couldn't ask for anything more um thank you guys for watching this video i still do need to do a tour of the commander i did one a long time ago just never got around to uploading it and i ended up deleting it because i hated it and i do need to do an update video on the civic i took it through the car wash just a, um about an hour ago because i still had salt and grime uh, from um those icy road conditions stuff like that that you saw in my last video of this car but i am trying to get an update video on this there's one thing that's pre um, preventing me from doing that and so hopefully i can get that worked out soon but um thank you guys for watching this video um i guess stay tuned for more and i will see you in my next video